Does it ever get bored? Boring, Connell. What? Telling people about the best club in the world? No, yeah. Hello, my name is Brooke and I'm a geologist and we're here on day two of the Oxford University Earth Sciences first year undergrads field trip to Pembrokeshire and today we're at St David's Head and currently we're at a place called Tranquiridine we're going to be looking at some cool Cambrian rocks that have some of the earliest shell fossils in them Water, we have the famous Tranhuridine seal of approval. Oh, gone. Found some cool things just here. One of our new students, Jay, we found these microbial mat traces with trace fossils in them, where you've had things tunneling under the microbial mats to get all the lovely goo. And then over here, we can see we've got these little, probably little worm traces, those little orange wiggles. So they're from 512 million years ago. How cool is that? What we're doing at the moment is teaching the students how to make maps and how to measure the strike and dip, which is really weird to get your head around at first. But everyone gets to do it eventually and it'll stick. That's why they're all climbing over this rock. Hi, yeah. Uh... Say hello, Jack, I'm filming it. Hello. <laughs> I couldn't tell if you were filming it. Yeah, definitely. Are you all confident in strike and dip now and making geological maps? Excellent. There's some more of our lovely trace fossils. Oh, that's so cool. So the lingular flags are kind of sandy clay and the term flagstone kind of alludes to the fact that even though it's a sandstone, it kind of splits like a shale because it's got these clay partings in them and produces flagstones. So these were deposited in towards the bottom of the wave base because there are, there are wave and current ripples in here. But it would have been tens of meters of water. It wouldn't have been very shallow water like we saw yesterday in, in the, the Silurian rocks of Marlow's. Absolutely fantastic. But sadly, no trilobites. We did see a few lingular though, which is exciting for the students to find. I wonder what kind of seals those are. If you look down here, we can see we've actually got some nice cross bedding, some swales and hummocks as well. So we've got currents going on and waves going on. So it can't have been that deep, definitely within the wave base. In the distance, the strange sounds of the wild jaw of whales. So we stopped on St. David's Head for a spot of lunch. We walked from the Cambrian, across the Cambrian Ordovician boundary, and across a load of Ordovician deep marine sediments, black shales and thin sandstones. And on St. David Head, we've got an entirely different type of rock that's not even a sediment. It's this stuff next to me. We have seen this before though, full of pyroxene and plagioclase and a few other bits and pieces. But most importantly is those pyroxenes and plagioclases. And if you remember back to one of our microscope episodes about the oceans, you might remember that pyroxene plus plagioclase in a rock, it's coarse to medium grained, means it's a gabbro. So smack bang in the middle of all of those odd vision black shells, we've got an emplacement of this gabbro. Have a look at it there, you can see the, the white, grey, creamy plagioclases, and then those dark pyroxenes that weather to this colour because they've got iron in them and they're getting oxidised. So that's pretty cool, slice of an ancient ocean crust. So our sediments are early to, I guess, middle Ordovician, and this is maybe his middle to late Ordovician, I can't remember the exact ages. But as our ocean was closing, paradoxically, 
bits of the ocean crust were stretching. Now you imagine when I remember when I said that when you stretch the ocean crust, you decrease some pressure on the mantle and that induces melting. Well, a load of this gabbro bobbed up into the already pre-deposited sediments. That's probably something called back arc extension. As one plate subducts underneath another, the overriding plate, the one on the top, stretches out to fill the gap. And that stretching causes this type of magmatism. So you get the paradoxical situation where you've got an ocean closing and compression, but then you also get stretching involved with that as well. And then emplacement of matrix rocks, like this nice gabbro. And this gabbro is a lot harder than the surrounding sediment and more weathering resistant. And it creates these prominent points in the landscape. And ancient humans noticed that and noticed how hard the rock was and turned these points, like St. David's Head, into a cliff fort. A cliff fort? A hill fort. Where they would come and hide if they were getting attacked by neighbouring tribes and later on by the Roman army. So, the ancient ocean crust from 450 million years ago served as a defensive perimeter for ancient humans a few thousand years ago. And now it's serving as a windshield for me and the other students in the modern day. We're going to have some lunch and then have a look around the hill fort and help the students learn about these Mayfit rocks. Professor Barty inspecting the grounds. Everybody noticed that the white crystals sort of stick out a bit. They make the rocks kind of grippy, so I can stand on funny slopes without going way back. So what we're doing now is we're teaching the students how to map. We've got the gabbro, and on the other side we've got the Ordovician sediments, sandstones and mudstones. And we've got a contact between them, represented by this stream here. We'll map out the contacts between the gabbro, which is impervious, so that's where the water's springing up, and then the Ordovician sandstones. See, they come about the shape of the gabbro body. Let's go and see what we can find. So over there we can see we've got some rock outcrop sticking up. That's going to be gabbro because it's very resistant. And over there we've got these nice rounded hills, especially where the students are. And that's probably going to be sandstone. As we can tell from... Oh, it's getting windy. So you can tell from the shape of the landscape and the features and the types of plants we'll find growing where the different kinds of rock you can't exactly see them. And this helps us with our mapping. Now we've come to a place called Strumble Head. We're still in the Ordovician. And what we're gonna look at is some very interesting rocks that don't normally make it to the Earth's surface and normally form deeper under the ocean at ocean ridges. So let's go and have a look at them. Can you see any interesting patterns in these rocks here? Perhaps you can notice that some of them are looking a bit rounded, a bit bobbly. Some of them as well look like they're full of bubbles. Here's the students having a look at the pillow basalts, trying to differentiate the pillow basalts from the marine sediments that drape them. And I was just eating a Welsh cake. Tasty, tasty Welsh cake. 
So here we're on the other side of the pillow basalt, the pillows over there. And what we're looking at here is what we were just stood on. And this is columnar jointing. So this is gonna be a, a number of different lava flows that have piled up and formed a platform for the pillow basalts to form on top of. And then our sediments to lay on top of them and then more pillow basalts to lay on top of them. So that way the pillow basalts haven't built up and bulldozed the sediment out of the way and built a mound. This is what we're seeing is basically the early stages of forming a volcanic island. And if you just look down here, you can see the thin line there and that's sediments on top of yet more pillow basalts. So this is obviously going on for quite a while, but that's pretty spectacular. Fantastic. So here we've got pillow basalts, and then there's our submarine sediments, deep marine black shales, and then the columnar jointing of our lava floor. And a beautiful view. That was a successful end to our second day in the field. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I always say that, because I always enjoy it. Leave a thumbs up if you like the video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. Leave any questions and comments below. Perhaps you've got some rocks you'd like to talk about and share it with your friends online. Until next time, see you later. Take care. Bye bye.